Today we'll be making this 3D map in DaVinci Resolve. This can be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve and all of the stuff to make this can be found online. So without further ado, let's get started. Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. So the first thing that we'll need is we're going to need a map. If you need a resource that you can use, I'll have a link in the description to this one, OpenStreetMap. It is a nonprofit, if I, if I understand correctly, and they have Creative Commons. So you can use their maps and not be concerned with like copyright or anything like that, if that is something that you're concerned with. Uh, most maps, you shouldn't have an issue though. Uh, the maps themselves, they have on this site, they have uh, different views, um, like you can see the subways and stuff, and a bunch of different street views. Uh, but one thing that I noticed with these maps is that they're a little cluttered. It, it wasn't really clean. Um, I, I just wanted streets. And this kind of had like stuff on it that I really wasn't able to take off. Luckily enough, they have an API so other people can use their uh, information, their map information to create their own maps. Kind of like how uh, Google Maps has the ability to use uh, CSS to change the colors of their maps. Um, they have the same thing. So uh, when I was searching, I found this website here and the link will be in the description as well. And they have multiple ways to view the maps from the uh, open street maps. Um, so they have like this watercolor thing, which I thought was pretty cool. If you don't want that and you want actual, you know, like a clean map, they have this as well. So they have a bunch of different options to choose from. And then you just kind of click down here um, and it takes you over to this view and you kind of put in your location, you figure out where exactly you want to, where am I right now? Am I out in California? Uh, I ended up going over to New York and I ended up getting Manhattan. Um, so just zooming in here, the more you zoom in, at least on this watercolor, uh, the more uh, detail you get on the actual maps themselves, which is pretty cool. So uh, you kind of figure out where you want. You click on image. It gives you this little uh, like crop tool. You figure out what you want. And then it gives you an actual image or it builds you an image. Um, so this was the image that I had built. But uh, the, the website, this website here uh, gives you a JPEG, but it's not one that DaVinci Resolve uh, can see. So I had to take it into a photo editor. You can use any photo editor if you need a free one. There's also GIMP that you can get. Uh, and then you just need to bring it in and export it as a JPEG. Um, so that you can put it into DaVinci Resolve. So uh, once I did that, then we're going to now uh, go into DaVinci Resolve. Oh, one other thing here. When you're picking your, your location for your map, one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that wherever you're going to be uh, mapping, uh, you want it to be in the middle of the map because since we're going 3D and we're going to be looking at it on an angle, you really don't want to have these edges, you know, outside the edges in view. So having it in the middle, you can kind of, you know, fly the camera around without being concerned that you're going to see one of the edges. So that's one other thing to keep in mind. So now that I have my map, I'm now in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, make sure that you set up your project to work for whatever you're doing. Uh, I'm just going to keep mine at 24 frames per second. And I'm going to make a new Fusion Comp. Once I do that, I'm going to drag it down on the timeline. You could change yours from five seconds or whatever you want to another amount, but five seconds seems fine for me. And then we're going to go right into Fusion. Once we're in Fusion, we're going to want to uh, navigate to our map to bring it into Fusion. All right, so now we just need to bring it in. So there's our map in here, and let's actually view it. So there's pretty much our map. So now we're going to be drawing the path for our animation. Uh, so I'm just going to be using the toolbar here. We're just going to grab a background, bringing the background down. I need to pick a color for the background because uh, right now it's just black. So because I use the watercolor one, I'm going to kind of use one of the colors that's in it just so it kind of fits in. 
And I think what I'm going to do is use this like red here. If you're using a different map, you can obviously use whatever color you want, but I just kind of want it to fit in. So I'm going to use one of those colors. Next thing that I need to add in here is a way to make a path and have it anim be able to animate it. So the easiest way to do this, is we're going to click on our background and then hold down shift and then hit space bar and our select tool comes up. And this is all of these tools can be found by just coming over here going into tools and they're here but it's a lot easier if you know what tool you're looking for to just search for it so i'm just going to hold down shift hit space bar this comes up and now i can type in my tool and we're going to type in uh, paint and we're going to grab our mask paint because this is already selected when i now hit enter it's automatically going to connect it up if you bring it in and it's not connected you just need to connect it up to the mask which is the blue and now we have it connected the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this background and we're going to lay it on top of the map so i'm just going to come from the background and drop it onto the uh, media in which is our map and now if i view this we won't see anything because our mask doesn't have anything in it yet so clicking on the mask and i'm just going to close this and bring this up and bring this down so i have a little more view here is we're going to come up here so we can start our path and we're going to draw our path from point a starting at point a where we want the, it to start to our second location that we're going to so i'm going to start right here at the park and we're going to drive down the street, down like this, come over here, come down, come over to here, down here, like that, like this, bring it over here, and we're going to stop there. So let's say that that is our uh, path, right? Great. It's a little big for my project here, so I'm going to change up the brush controls a little bit. So coming into here to brush controls, I'm gonna bring down the softness a little bit. We don't wanna go all the way down because if I zoom in here by holding down uh, control and mouse wheeling in, we can see it's kind of uh, like steppy. So if I bring this up just a little bit, but not have it blurred out like it was, just a little bit so we kind of have like a smooth edge. And then we'll bring this way down so it just kind of fills up that um, the road there zooming out just a little bit making sure that all my paths are where we want it you can click on the points if you need to adjust them and that's kind of our path the reason why we use the mask paint is because down here in stroke controls we have the right on so now we can animate this to right on our path which is pretty cool the next thing is I want to have like a uh, animation of a, uh, a circle kind of popping up where we start it, then the path going, and then it popping up again where we're, en where we're uh, ending at. So the easiest way to do this, because I want to also add drop shadows in to kind of uh, uh, make it look a little bit better, I'm going to click on the background, control C, and then just clicking down here so it's not selected, control V to paste it. And the reason why I'm doing that is just so I can copy the color to make it the easiest. And I'm going to grab an ellipse tool, bring that in and connect that over. Next, we're gonna go from our background and we're gonna go into the rest of our node tree. So the end of this merge, it'll now be into it, but I need to view it. So I'm gonna select this merge, drag it up to our viewer so we can actually see it. I'm gonna come up here just so we can see the actual whole project that we're working on. In this ellipse tool, I'm gonna come over to width, right click, come down to expression, and I'm just going to uh, pick with this to the height. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, so then I only have to control one thing so that we get a perfect circle con you know, consistently. If they aren't, then our width and height can be weird and then we'll get weird shapes and stuff. So this is kind of the easiest way to do this. So we only have to really animate one thing. Next, I'm just gonna kind of figure out the size that I want this to be. I think that's a good size there, so at 15. And then I'm gonna click on the center of it and bring it up to where I want it to start. So there's one. Next, I'm gonna drag this over, selecting it, Control C, Control V to paste it. So I was selected on here when I hit Control V, it automatically added it in. And now because I have two of these, I'm just going to name these to make it a little easier to determine which one's which. So I'm gonna hit F2. And then just type in start, click on this one, F2, end, and then there we go, our start and our end. And then I'm gonna click here, because we're currently selected on our end, they're both right here, and bring this guy over to here. 
So there we go. Now we have our start and end points. Looks pretty good. But like I was saying, I want to add a drop shadow in for each one of these. So I'm going to come into our circles uh, on this background, and then I'm gonna shift spacebar, and then just type in here, drop, get our drop shadow, drop that on. And then over here, I think I'm gonna turn this to zero because I kind of want the drop shadow to be all the way around it because a typical drop shadow, uh, you're gonna have it you know, only on one side of it because typically it's like the sun's coming down so you have a shadow. Uh, but I kind of want this to be all the way around it. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm just going to bring up, let's actually see everything's connected here. I'm gonna bring this up and why don't I see this? Okay, so they're way over here. I'm gonna bring it back, zero, and bring the blur down. So now because I did these uh, separately, because I could have taken both of these and put them together, but now that I did it separately, there's a drop shadow that kind of goes over the line. So kind of, I don't know, it makes it look a little bit better in my eyes. And I want a drop shadow on the line as well. So what I'm going to do is on this drop shadow, I'm just going to control C, clicking on this background, control V to automatically connect it in. And then it adds that drop shadow onto there as well. You can play around with each one individually if you like, but I think that where it's at now is fine. I think the start, uh, I think maybe it was in the right spot. Okay, so now I have that. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I want to add my animations in here. I'm gonna come to, let's say frame one, and on the start one, I wanna have it animate. So it kind of starts at nothing, it opens up, and I kind of want it to overshoot its uh, current amount. So it kind of looks like a bubble, like boop, boop, right? So to do that, I'm just going to set my keyframes and then adjust uh, after that. So I'm gonna set my keyframe here and then come down a little bit, maybe 10 and then a little bit less. So something like that, I'll keyframe here as well. Now I'll come back to my first keyframe. Obviously I want this to be zero cause I don't wanna see it. And then our, because we know that this is the size that we wanna keep it. Uh, I'm gonna come to the second keyframe which is gonna be an overshoot. And I'm just going to increase this by a little bit. So let's do 17. So then let's animate or show that now. It's going to come in and it's going to bounce, right? Boop, boop. Okay. But it's it's kind of rough around the edges. So what I'm going to do is add some like easing into there. So clicking on our spline and let's bring this up a little bit and maybe bring this up so we can see everything. We have our start here. So we're going to click on that. Here are our keyframes. We click this button, we can see just where the keyframes are. I'm gonna highlight everything. Hitting F will do what's referred to as flatten. So it'll it's almost like easing. And uh, if you want to adjust these a little bit more, you can grab the controls and the little handles and you can move them, or you can hit uh, T and you can change your easing in and easing out on the ones you have highlighted. So now that I have them all highlighted, I can change it for all of them. I think where it's at will be fine. Let's take a, a look at that. So there we go. It's just a little bounce, right? So on the bounce, kind of right here where it overshoots, that's where I'm gonna start the animation for the line to start to draw. So I'm gonna come back to my uh, line here and open this up again. And our right on, we're gonna come all, bring it all the way over so we have zero, zero. Keyframe here. Now I kind of have to determine how long is it gonna take to draw this whole line. And I think we're at 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna do a little bit uh, over that because currently at 10. So let's do 35. Just random numbers I'm picking up. You can obviously adjust as you need. Uh, and then I'm gonna go all the way up. So now we have the line going all the way up. And then here, I'm gonna come back to our, uh, our end point and we're gonna to start to add the animations on there. So I'm gonna keyframe here, and then come up a little bit, keyframe, and then we're also gonna do an overshoot on this one as well. So there we go. And come back to the first one, we'll zero that out. The overshoot, let's go to 17. And I want to also add the easing in here, but now I have a lot of stuff going on here, so it's kind of hard to determine what is what. So the easiest way, I currently have the end selected, so we'll come right in here into this menu and show only selected tools. So now only the selected one. But now I kind of can't see all of them, so click this button again to see all those keyframes. Highlight, highlight, hit F, and we're good to go.
So let's take a look at our current animation, holding down uh, control and mouse wheeling out so we can see everything. So there we go, going all the way around. Now, this obviously isn't the first time it's rendering. It's not rendering um, uh, cached. So it might go a little slower. So there we go, now we're cached. And that is a pretty good animation, right? So now we have our animation done. The next thing we need to do is put this into 3D space. So to do that, because all of this is all one layer, um, we're just going to add an image plane. So an image plane is just a flat plane that you would throw an image on. Uh, the other things, let's close some of this so we can see more. The other things, we're going to grab a camera because we need a camera to fly around. And then we need a 3D renderer. And this will take the 3D scene and go back into 2D for our video. So we can, you know, export this and, you know, manipulate it more if we need to. So next, we're going to take this uh, camera. Uh, we're going to go to the out of the image plane, which will go into a merge. And I'll explain to you why you want to have the merge later. And then we're going to go from the merge into the uh, 3D renderer. Now, if I view the 3D renderer, we won't see anything. And the reason why is because if I look at this merge, and we bring it up over here, we can see that our camera, I'm going to hold Alt and hold down mouse wheel or middle mouse. And we can see that our camera is kind of, you know, at the same plane. Our sensor is at the same plane as that image plane. But first, let's uh, fix this image plane and actually get our image on it. So we're going to go from all of our 2D stuff that we've been working on, go into the image plane. So now it's there. And if I click on my camera, we have our little widget here. We can pull back our camera and now in the 3D uh, renderer, we can now start to see stuff. So if I pull this back, now we can see it. And you can see these lines right here that are going through. That's just kind of showing what's in view uh, over here. If I put this back to fit, we can see that where this is up here, we're kind of right there. So that's how you can see what's in frame, right? The next thing that we're going to do is because we want to uh, kind of fly the camera around, the easiest way to do this is to take this image and kind of set it up like a map. So we're going to flip it down and we're going to point the camera and spin the camera around it. So on the image plane, we're going to come over to uh, here to do the transform. And we're going to rotate this on the X axis to 90 or negative 90. So now it's flat. Obviously the camera is just pulled straight back so it can't see it. So if I come to my zoom out a little bit, grab my camera and go up, now we can start to see it because now we're looking at it on an angle. But if I bring my camera up, we're not really seeing it and we'll have to point the camera down. It's a, it, it gets very, uh, complicate it very quickly. So what we'll have to do is we'll come back to our camera and in the transform here, we have a target. So now we can say where we want our camera always to be pointing at. So if I use target, what it's gonna go is it's gonna go zero, 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 which is where the image currently is. So now if I take my camera and move my camera around, it's always going to be pointing. And I see, so if I move it over here, it's now turning the camera to point at that. So now I don't really have to be concerned with always making sure that the rotation is correct. So what we'll do now is I'm going to zoom in on this map. And this current widget here is our target, right? So we can see our camera moving. So we're going to come up to our top point here, right here. We're going to come all the way back to uh, frame one. And on the target, we're going to keyframe there. And as this animates out, we can now follow it with the target. Or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to the end point. So like that. Now, if you were flying around a mountain and it's going, you know, it's making like these big circles or going all over the place and you can't keep everything in frame, you might need to uh, move this target around. But because I'm just going uh, a couple of blocks, uh, I don't really have to be concerned with you know, making this very complicated. So now I have it over here and I think I'm actually going to, uh, that, I think that's fine. So we have it moving like this. One of the things we can also do is come into here is we're also going to just ease this out. So I just currently selected on here, opened up the spline, 
because we're currently on this camera, we can see the camera and the only thing we added keyframes are the target. So we'll just ease those out. Okay, so now we have it kind of moving right along with this, but it's obviously not moving with the path, uh, but it's going from point A to point B. Now I can kind of zoom in my camera, get my camera closer to the scene and kind of get this to work. So let's move the camera around a little bit. And let's see here. So, oh, I didn't, I didn't really explain how to move the camera around. So I'm holding down alt and middle mouse to rotate. Holding down just middle mouse moves the camera around like this. So alt allows you to rotate in your scene and just holding down middle mouse um, allows you to move like this. So I don't know why I didn't explain that earlier. But so now we're kind of moving around here. Um, I'm gonna come back to the beginning and maybe bring this up and bring it over maybe in something like that. Let's take a look. So we're coming around and we're going down. All right, so I'm gonna start all right, my keyframes all the way at frame zero. Keyframe this stuff, because right where it starts is good, right? Because it's right in the middle of the frame, that looks great. Then I'm gonna come down to the end down here and we're going to manipulate our camera to maybe something like that. So let's take a look. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now I, I when I added my first keyframe in because I had the keyframes already set up, when I move down here and I move down past these keyframes because I wanna add in multiple uh, sets of keyframes at different timings so that it looks more dynamic. Uh, the more you play around 3D space, the more you'll get better at making things look more dynamic by like offsetting where your keyframes are and then adding easing in and stuff. So that's what I did. But when I came down here, when I move my camera around, it's going to trigger new keyframes because I already have them active. So now I'm just going to ease these two keyframes as well. And let's watch that again. So we're coming around and going around something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe, I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. What I also, what we can also add in here is uh, a little bit of like a vignette to kind of make it like you're focused on one particular area. So I'm going to, let's close this up. I'm gonna grab a black background and connect the black background up to the renderer. So now it'll obviously be just black. In the um, in in this merge, I'm just going to drop down the blend just so I can see through it a little bit. It's kind of like an opacity. And I'm just going to grab in a mask. I'm gonna use the bleep, 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 spline and connect this up. And then I'm going to just start to draw like a little shape in here like that, I'm gonna invert it and add a good amount of feathering here. So there we go. Now if I come up here, maybe take everything, I just highlighted everything and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And then we can see that, highlight everything again, maybe just highlight these top ones and open them up just a little bit. So like that. So I think that's pretty good. Now I can come back into here, increase this a little bit and maybe feather this out just a little bit more, something like that, right? So now I can see where we're going, but I don't know where we are, right? So as a viewer, I don't know where we just went to. I see we just moved, but I don't know where we went. So I'm going to now add in like a little title that's going to pop up there you know, stating where we currently are. I'm just gonna move this uh, media out down a little bit. So I'm going to add in another background. It's currently black and I'm going to add in some text and connect the text on top of the background so I can view it here. And in the text, I'm going to make this uh, Joe's bar. Cause that's where we're going to Joe's bar. In the background, I'm going to add in a rectangle because I kind of want to make this like a little box that's going to pop up. 
and make this a little smaller for Joe's bar. Uh, selecting on this rectangle, I'm going to hit shift space bar and type in triangle, hit enter. Now we'll have a little triangle here. Bring this down something like that. So there we go, our little triangle. Maybe, there we go. So there's our, let's round this out just a little bit. But there is what we're currently working with. So now I just need to, yes, there we go. All right, so now I need to bring this into our project. But, so we need to get another uh, image plane. We're gonna connect all of that into our image plane and bring this into our merge. So 2D merges, you have a background and a foreground, right? So we know what to overlap on one another. But in 3D space, you don't really have that. So with 3D merges, you can add as many things as you want to into one 3D merge. So that's why we made the 3D merge. So now we connect it in, and now it's over here in our project. I'm just going to pull it up a little bit, and we're gonna bring that point to the uh, to that dot, but let's actually view everything. We can see it's a little big, so we'll come over here and size this down just a little bit. And I'm gonna zoom in over here. I'm gonna bring this down like that, back a bit. And we just need to kind of finesse this in here just ever so slightly so we can actually see this. Bring it down. Let's see where we are. Over, back. I think that's good. All right. And bring it down. So there we go. That's where we are. Uh, the next thing is I need some type of an animation because currently this is just going to be sitting there static and that, that won't really look all that great. So uh, I'm going to change the scaling on this, but I kind of want it to start from this point where the scaling is going to happen. So I'm going to use a transform node. And the reason why is because I can change the, uh, the point in which it's going to be manipulated by. So let me just show you here. Just typing in transform, making sure you get the 2D transform because we're working on everything before it goes into 3D. Now, if I look at it here, if I change the size, it's going to scale from the center. Obviously, that's not what we want because we want it to go from the point. So we're going to change the pivot. And if you can see here, the pivot's this little uh, X. We're going to change the pivot all the way down to that bottom corner right there. Now, when we scale this, it's going to scale off of that little pivot point, right? So as you can see over here, we can have it uh, go boom, right, where we are. So what I need to look at now is on this end, where we have the animation for this endpoint. And I think right here, once it does its um, its overshoot, is when I'm going to start the animation for uh, this. So I'm just going to start the scaling at zero. I'm gonna come up a little bit, go to one, sure. And I'm also going to overshoot this as well. So coming back to this one, go 1.1. So we have it. Uh, Coming in, animating, and settling. Also going to add in some easing. So there we go. Um, now you can obviously manipulate this more to kind of fit your need to get to make things move, add more streets. You could add uh, like how we added this one 2D image, you could add in like palm trees or because this is a bar, you could add in um, like beer mugs that just pop out and maybe you can do a sound effect so they clang together or whatever it may be. But that's kind of how we would set this up. Um, you know, you could go a million different ways um, to do this, but that's kind of how you would set it up. Uh, once we have this all done, we can then... At the end of our node tree, connect this all up to the media owl. Uh, once we do that, when we come back over into edit, now we have it on the edit page. Uh, if you add this into your project like this or render this out or whatever it may be, you at least now have the ability to do so. Um, it's kind of up to you how you want to set everything up. If you want everything in one project 
or if you just want to render this out and then add it into your project later. But here, everything's cached, so now we can look at it. And there's our animation. Now all we would have to do is add in sound effects. You could you could do a ton of different things, but at least now you know how to how to set this up. Um, the only thing that I might want to do a little bit more is I don't like how the camera just kind of goes and ends there. So you could come back in and just add in a little bit more. So maybe where are we at the camera? So here is this and maybe we come out a little bit. Let's actually see the 3D zoom out a little bit and maybe we just kind of come back ever so slightly and down ever so slightly. So just doing that way, you know, really far out here and only picking just those end keyframes and easing just those, we should have pretty good results here. And the other thing too is that we don't really need to, uh, I think that's fine actually. Maybe one thing that I don't like is that it's kind of showing the edge there. So maybe I'll come over just a little bit. And then we could take these and maybe uh, holding shift, we could you know slightly adjust them so we have every, everything kind of end at different points. Just add a more dynamic feel to it. All right. So that's kind of how we would set it up. Like I said, you could add in anything in here to make this fancy. If you wanted to, if maybe you were going to a bowling alley, you could have like pins pop up and have a little sign pop up and saying the bowling alley name. Or, you know, if you're going to a billiard hall, you could have the pool balls come out. I don't know. Uh, but at least now you know how to create something like this. And uh, yeah, let your creative juices flow. Uh, that sounded really weird. If you have questions about the Vinci Resolve, I have a Facebook group that you can join, ask your questions there. Someone in the community could help you with your issues that you're having. But with that being said, my name's JR, and thanks for watching, guys.